Gabe and Gabby, two lovely twins, brother and sister, were the best of friends. Where he goes, she goes. Their secrets no one knows. Grandpa Will told them time after time, Never ever go into the cornfield. Children go and never come back. The cornfield is dangerous, and that's a fact. Now hear what I'm saying, and promise me this day, you will never ever go into the cornfield to play. Then, one fateful day, no one will ever know why the brother and sister chose to go. They went into the cornfield when they were told not to. Drawn by curiosity, they took Grandpa's doll, Old Blue. Off they go into the cornfield, down the road from Grandpa Will's. So fascinated they were by the size of the cornfield. Gabe, Gabby, and their dog, Old Blue, forgot they were forewarned of what not to do. Running up and down through the road of corn, laughing and barking until they were worn and torn. Hide and seek was the name of the game. But then suddenly, without warning, darkness came. Now night has fallen, and the children are calling. Can you hear me, Gabe? Can you hear me, Gabby? Can you hear me, Old Blue? It's dark and scary. Where are you? The children and dog were lost in the night, in the cornfield, away from each other's sight. Old Blue is barking above Gabe's shout. Can you shout. hear me, Gabby? Their voices grew faint, but they still called out. Can you hear me, now, Gabby? fear abounds as a whispering sound carries a frightening message. Gabby cannot be found. Then rustling leaves get louder to the listening ear, and a trampling sound through the corn gets near. Gabby's voice is now silent. Location unknown. No signs of her whereabouts. Where has she gone? Gabe thought. Gabby is gone. Where could she be? Alone and scared? She's the other part of me. Hold on, little sis. I'm coming for you. Me, your big brother, and our dog, Old Blue. Then a voice from the dark with a chilling tone screamed so loud it shook to the bone. I'm scared of the bone shaking. If Afraid, with faithful old Blue by his side. I am afraid of you, straw man. You better go run and hide. Then suddenly to the left, gave an old Blue saw. Scarecrow cut but shorty, all made of straw. And a tall black hat and a raggedy coat, wearing Gabby's scarf around his throat. Gabe's anger and tears all came through as he screamed at Cut Butt Shorty over the barking of faithful Old Blue. Where is my sister? What did you do? You better not hurt her or it will be the end of you. Ha ha ha, little boy. You'll never know me. Leave or I'll do the same to you for sure. Now I told you once and I'll tell you twice. I'm scarecrow, cut, not shorty, and I'm not very nice. This is my cornfield. Can't you hear? I got great big scissors to clip your ear. Scarecrow, cut, but shorty, toward Gabe, started running. With great big scissors and ugly face so cunning. But Gabe stood strong, and so did faithful old Blue. 
growling and barking and ready to chew. But Scarecrow cut but Shorty kept coming with his scissors in hand as Gabe and Old Blue took their very last stand. Sick him, Old Blue. Buy him hard in every place. Then I'll hit him with this magic stick and take that smirk off his ugly face. Cut but Shorty's eyes got real big when Old Blue's sharp teeth bit into his twigs. Then Gabe, with his magic stick, gave Scarecrow Cut Butt Shorty a big whop, causing his raggedy hat to crumble and fall off his top. Now where's my sister, you miserable lot? If you don't tell me, I'll hit you again with all I got. Now on the ground, Cut Butt Shorty pleads and begs as Old Blue keeps tearing at his short skinny legs. Scarecrow cut but shorty raised his scissors at Old Blue. Then Gabe whopped him with his stick. Sure cut but shorty was almost through. Begging and yelling while down on his back. Cut but shorty scream. Gabe said Cut but shorty, she better be. If not, you haven't seen the last of me. Gabe and faithful old Blue never looked back as they raced across the cornfield to that little old shack. In the shack, it seemed, no one was there. They looked all over. They searched everywhere. Then Gabe saw faithful old Blue scratching at a rug on the floor, sniffing, barking, and scratching some more. Move back, Oak Blue. Boy, what do you find? Do you find my sister Gabby? Did we find her in time? Old Blue kept barking and wagging his tail. Gabe pulled the rug back, and faithful Old Blue had found the trail. They found a big lock on a little small door, hiding a passage to underneath the floor. Gabe took the magic stick he had in his hand, placed it underneath the lock, and pried as hard as he can. Then the lock popped open, and what did he see? He saw his sister Gabby and the missing children. Gabe set them free. Gabe and Gabby, with laughter and tears, hugged and kissed, releasing their fears. Now back together, as twins should be, promising each other's secrets to keep. As Gabe and Gabby walked away from that shack with fateful old Blue and the others and never looked back, all the kids were happy in a thankful way that Gabe and faithful Old Blue saved them from Scarecrow Cut Butt Shorty that day. Gabby told Gabe, I knew you would set me free, because I'm little sis and you can't do without me. Scarecrow Cut Butt Shorty, he disappeared <coughs> in the night, never returning to the cornfield after Gabe and faithful Old Blue whooped him that night. Gabe, Gabby, and the other kids were now safe, heading home to their families with smiles on their face. But before we all part and finally say it's all right, Gabe told them to never forget the horrific night. We all make the pact and agree one final deal to never ever go into the cornfield. When they finally got home to their worried Grandpa Will, he asked, where on earth have you two been? Do you know how I feel? Grandpa Will, we are sorry we made you worry, and we won't do it again. We were just out playing and found some long-lost friends. The end.